Hello and welcome to our inventory system series. Previously we started work on our drag and drop widgets. In this episode we're going to make it so we can actually click and drag around an icon based upon what's in that slot. So let's get started. Okay, so to implement the drag and drop functionality we need to go into our inventory slot first of all. So open this up. And the first thing we'll notice here is that we can't just use the button as it is because we're going to have later on have functionality for this button. So we're going to have to do something a bit different to detect our mouse clicks. Whilst I'm here, I'm just going to rename the button here to button slot. And in our graph here, as I said, we can't use the button as is. And we can't do mouse click detection either because normal mouse clicks are ignored when there's a button involved. So how to do this? Well, go to override and you'll find down the bottom here on preview mouse button down. This basically is another mouse button down event, but it's separate from the button that you get. That way it works as a separate input. So what we're gonna do is drag in our item ID, and we're going to, first of all, check to make sure it's not equal to anything. We don't wanna be able to drag and drop anything that is empty. Um, so we'll put it into a branch to uh, help filter that out. And on the force here, we're just going to return that back um, as unhandled, meaning that it failed. So in the case of the true branch, then we need to take the mouse event and we need to check what mouse button we're actually using. So we can use is mouse button down and we're going to check if it was the left mouse button here detected the click. Now this returns a boolean, so we can put that into a branch. And if that's successful, that means we have successfully clicked on this on this uh, slot. So we're going to do detect drag if pressed. Now this will kick off the whole drag and drop process. Um, we just need to make sure we put in the various keys here. So let's put in first of all the return value into the return node, and then the drag. Uh, sorry, the, and then we have to drag the uh, mouse event over here to the event on the drag if pressed and the drag key is going to be our left mouse button okay okay so now we've got the drag if pressed that's going to kick off the whole chain of events starting off with the on drag detected function so we go to override and find on drag detected so this is what's triggered by that function that we called earlier Now the first thing we're doing here is going to create the widget. This is the preview image that we made last time. So I'm going to just choose our drag preview. Uh, but we need to give our drag preview some information. Okay, so it doesn't know what it's meant to display or what it's meant to show, anything like that. So we click on the browse here, go back into our widget for the drag preview that we worked on last time. And we're going to make the item ID here editable and exposed on spawn. This will allow us to enter what item ID it should be when it is created. If it doesn't show, just refresh it. We plug in the item ID, and that is it. The next we need to do is create the drag and drop operation. So create drag and drop operation. And we're going to choose our DD inventory slot that we worked on previously. And we're going to go into our DD inventory slot to do a similar thing to what we've done with the drag preview. We need to give it this item ID. So let's go ahead and head back into our DD inventory slot. And we're going to expose our content index and our inventory component here uh, to expose on spawn. And we're going to refresh those nodes there. So once we've got that, we can now put in our inventory component. And we can put in the index that this is using. Uh, it doesn't look like I've got the index at hand easily so we're going to have to go ahead and fetch that and add it to our inventory slot here so we'll promote the content index here to a variable and we'll make this variable uh, editable and exposed on spawn so when we're creating these slots we can set what item uh, what index it is inside of the grid so with that done we're going to head over to our inventory grid once we plug this into operation that is oh and sorry we also have to put in our default drag visual as well 
connect that up with the widget that we just made. Okay, there we go. So as I said, we need to actually set this content index. So we're going to go head over to our inventory uh, grid UI and head over to the graph to find our for each loop where we're creating individual slots. And you can see here it's already appeared as content index. Now, if it doesn't, remember you can just refresh this, the node and it'll appear. So that just get plugged into the array index and that auto increments that number up for each slot. So we go into our viewport here and we can uh, pick up an item and go into our widget. And there it is. We can click and drag it around freely. Now it doesn't go into any of the slots just yet. We have to do yet do that. But we, as you can see, here, we can drag around this visual. And it shows the items uh, thumbnail as well inside of that box there too. Now you may see these two errors come up when you are messing about with this. Uh, that's totally okay. So what this basically means is that when you've got a widget open, when you time to close it, uh, we've told it to use the uh, player controller to do something with it. So we need to fix that. And also the HUD itself here um, could be returning as null or none. So the reason why the player HUD could return null or none is when it's being played on something that isn't the local controller. Because we're playing a multiplayer, we can only add widgets to a local controller. So in here, we're going to use the node is a local player controller into a branch, and that will just check to make sure that we're only adding it to our screen and not try to add it into any other one else's. So that should clear that error for us. And there we have it. We can now click and drag around our icons around the screen. However, they can't actually do anything just yet when we drop them onto another slot. That brings us to the next episode. Next episode, we're going to work on the functionality to drag and drop these items onto other slots and transfer them to that slot. You can watch the next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where all my videos are made available early to all patrons supporting me. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.